Hey there, welcome back to Reddit Dating, the best channel for Reddit cheating stories. Be sure to like, subscribe and hit the bell notification for more stories like these. Now, let's get into the video. I'm 30 years old, and my wife is 27 years old. She has a date tomorrow night, and she has no idea I know everything. So, once I get home from work, I sit down in front of the television. My wife's laptop is on the desk in front of me, and I'm too lazy to go to the bedroom and fetch mine, so I take hers. I went to check my Facebook to respond to my cousin's message, but when I opened the inbox, I noticed that my wife was still logged in. Lo and behold, my wife is trying to arrange up a date for tomorrow night. This soldier, let's call him Stan, is 32 and grew up in the same town as she did, although I believe they only have a passing acquaintance. So my beautiful wifey arrives home about an hour after me and immediately begins discussing our weekend plans. My friends from my hometown want to get together tomorrow night. Stan, his sister Jessica, and another young lady named Sam. I'm not sure whether I want to go yet, but it's okay if you don't because they're all from my boring hometown. Then, she quickly begins making plans for Saturday and Sunday. I wait for her to finish before saying that I wouldn't mind coming with her, especially because I want to meet her friends or friend. She goes on for a short while about how dull it will be and how I go to bed very early, so I could be grumpy. I wake up early for my job. I keep insisting that I would love to travel, but she changes the subject because she is pretty certain she will not go. When she began watching television, I informed her that I needed to borrow her laptop for my fantasy football league so I could see any new developments with her date. Then, his message arrives, and she swaps phone numbers casually just a few feet away from me. She used the FB app on her phone, and I couldn't see the screen, but I could see everything on her PC. Now, I don't want to approach her straight away since she'll come up with some nonsense excuse. I'm curious to see what excuse she'll come up with tomorrow so. She can go outside and leave me at home, but it's eating me from the inside, and I can't sleep right now. Our marriage isn't perfect, we've been through some difficult times recently, and life isn't what it used to be. I adore her, but I don't want to be with a cheater. She cheated on me, also with a soldier, four months into the relationship when we started dating, not yet married and I forgave her, but I vowed to myself that this was the only second opportunity. We don't have children, which makes the situation easier, and we both have solid jobs, so alimony would be low. Is there anyone who can advise me on how to tackle this? Should I face her tomorrow morning, or should I wait until the date arrives? So I'm just going to post her short dialogue, artistically tweaked, so that someone can perhaps tell me that I'm insane and reading much too much into it. Is it just me, or is she drooling all over him? I feel like my head is about to explode because I'm so out of it, and now I have to sleep next to her. While I was typing, he texted her to text him that she became bored at work. Nice, honey. I hope you have a wonderful day tomorrow. On the 25th of August, at 8.51 p.m., Ashley Stan. How are you doing these days, pal? It's wonderful to hear that you're doing well. Stan, 8.52 p.m. on August 25th, 2008. Ashley, thank you very much for your help. How are you doing? It's wonderful to receive your message. What's the most recent news? On the 25th of August, at 8.54 p.m., Ashley O., oh, nothing new to report here. The move from our previous state to our new city was recently completed by me. To be back at home with my family is a wonderful feeling. What are your current whereabouts, exactly? Yes, I have to admit that your life is fascinating to me. I genuinely hope that everything in your life is going well. Do you find yourself on the road a lot? On August 25, 8.59 p.m., Stan posted a message. In addition to traveling frequently, I also live in her and her husband's hometown. As a private security guard in another city, I am currently employed as a temporary security guard. In addition, I give weapons and law enforcement slash military training classes. I'm simply attempting to keep myself occupied. I'm considering re-enlisting in the Army. It's nice to receive your message. What are you up to these days? Ashley, August 25, 2008 at 9.08 p.m., that's amazing to hear. As a result, I am confident that you are in high demand right now. I'm sure you've enjoyed having the opportunity to put your talents to use at home. In retrospect, I've always regretted that I didn't pursue a military career and instead chose to work as her job. While my job is typical corporate, the fact that I'm not unusual makes me a rock star in my own right. For me, the corporate ladder is a shorter one. I've relocated five times in the last six years, therefore I'm still considered a nomadic person, but that's how I prefer it. Traveling, 
especially a lot of it, is a great source of energy for me. Definitely need to see some interesting places, my friend. It's likely not for the reasons you intended, but I recall you as having a very worldly presence in my mind. You be at home almost in a place. If you haven't heard it before, let me say it again. The manner you've served this country is extremely commendable. I hope you hear that a lot in the future 12.18 a.m. on August 26th. Stan says I sincerely apologize for the delay in answering, and I'd like to express my gratitude for the attention you've given me. Most people don't say anything more than a thank you when they receive accolades. Many men regard me as a constant reminder of what they haven't accomplished, which causes them to become defensive. The majority of women simply consider it to be something hot or appealing. The most flattering compliments come from the elderly. Younger people have little understanding of sacrifice or honor, but you are an exception to this rule. You're highly captivating, and it looks that you have the ability to see through and comprehend others. That, I believe, is one of the reasons for your success. It exhibits your shrewdness and acumen. The time is 8.43 a.m. on August 26. Ashley laughing, now's my chance to express my regret for being so tardy. Thank you so much for your kind words, which are among the highest compliments I've ever gotten. Despite the fact that I am unable to comprehend how difficult life must be for a soldier, I am aware that many other people will perish as a result of your failure to do what is required of you regardless of the public disgrace. What the news media doesn't show in their video, and what the general public doesn't comprehend, is this. This is the most selfless act anyone has ever done, and I can't think of a more honorable yet difficult life to do than what you folks are leading. My admiration and admiration for your capacity to live with such conviction and purpose will always remain unquenchable. People who cope with that suffering are the minority, and I hope that if you ever need to talk to someone or require someone to say thank you again, you will keep my contact information in mind. Despite the fact that I wish I had spent more time with you when we were younger, I don't see why we can't continue to be wonderful friends today. Stan, August 26, 8.53 a.m. Thank you so much, Ashley. You were usually a happy person with a wide smile, and of course, you were quite attractive. Today, smile and have a wonderful day. When this gig is over, I'll be in our new city to see my brother, and maybe we can meet for drinks and shoot together. Ashley, August 26, 8.55 a.m., you have no idea how much it would please me. You better tell me because I'll take it personally. You look after yourself. 8.57 a.m. on August 26, Stan, I will certainly notify you. Take care of yourself, and I'll see you soon. My brother resides in half an hour distant. Where do you live? Ashley. August 26, 8.59 a.m., I am now located in a specific area of our city. Located across the river from downtown, about 30 minutes away from his brother's house. Everything in our city takes roughly a half hour, I've discovered. Stan, August 26, 9.01 a.m., that is very accurate. Are there any nice bars up that way? I like the particular neighborhood. Ashley, August 26, 9.02 a.m., yes. I'm very near to specific location. But I'm attempting to learn about the local dive bars. The more local, the better. Stan, 8 slash 26 slash 2007, 907 AM, I might know of a couple you'd like. I normally go to the pub a block away from my brother's, so that I can walk there and back without having to drive. Certain location also features a couple of nice spots. Ashley, August 26, 921 AM. Particular location is fantastic, I'm aware. So as for the moral of the story, I'll leave that to you to decide. Stan, August 26, 9.24 a.m. Haha, I like any style of pub or dive, but I'm not into the club scene. What kind of people do you hang out with up there? And I'm assuming you work Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m.? Ashley, 8 slash 26 slash 11.40 a.m., because I'm still so new, I mostly get out with folks from work. I wouldn't say 9-5, but I do her job, so certain times are busier than others. But my office is extremely time flexible, so it's a corporate office with more flexibility, if that makes sense. Stan, 8-26-1149 a.m., that's okay. We just received our contract, so I should be in our city soon. Stan, 9-4-11, 1141 a.m., hello there, you Ashley. September 4, 1.39 p.m. Hello there, buddy. What the hell happened to you? Stan. September 4, 2.38 p.m. Are you doing well? 
I was considering visiting our city tomorrow. Do you have any plans, Ashley? September 4, 2.44 p.m. Actually, I don't. That would be fantastic. It's been an extremely long week. Stan, September 4, 7.39 p.m. Fantastic, his phone number. I'm hoping to get up there tomorrow night and hang. Out with you, Ashley, 9 slash 4, 7.48 p.m. Yeah. Okay, I stored your phone number. I am, her phone number. Please let me know if you plan on coming. 9.52 a.m. Stan, sorry, I've been at some show. I will definitely let you know tomorrow. If you're bored at work, send a text message. Edit. There has been no word about her plans for tonight. I didn't push it too hard, so she wouldn't suspect anything was wrong. I opted not to confront her right away because I wanted to see if she was going to see that guy alone. I'll keep asking her to accompany me, but I'm afraid she'll come up with a I-have-to-work-late excuse if she really wants to meet him. I'll try to figure out where they're going to meet, and then I'll just go there and meet them. If I see them alone, I'm going to file for divorce. I can't go through this again, since it seriously jeopardizes my life and well-being. I'm really considering not going to counseling, if my worst fears come true, since I believe there is a significant difference in our mindsets if she considers it appropriate to meet a guy on a Friday night without notifying me. I would never meet a four-year younger woman I know from way back, and they were not close friends, as mentioned in their letters, on a Friday night in a pub without informing or inviting my wife. I don't see how she doesn't realize what's going on and how damaging it might be to our relationship. She isn't an idiot if she doesn't see this, and if she's willing to take the risk, it just wasn't meant to be. My stomach is rebelling from anxiety, and I only slept for about an hour last night. I despise this sensation. If the worst happens, I have no intention of making a fuss. I don't know that guy, and I have nothing against him, despite the fact that he knows we're married, because it's not about him. It's about my wife's decisions. I'm crossing my fingers that she'll make the right decisions, but I'm not optimistic.